you are welcome to today's Sunday school the 17th of January shall we pray father please put your genuine fear in my heart thank you for last week's lesson where we learned how to deal with fear father we pray if there's still any altar of fear in our lives that this lesson of today will put away all sorts of fears in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Brethren, last week we looked at how we can deal with fear. We saw that there were two types of fear. We said the fear of the Lord and the fear of something or of someone. How we so that the fear of the Lord is a beneficial fear. It's good for us as children of God. But the other type of fear, the fear of something or the fear of man, is a harmful type of fear. It's detrimental. We looked at the consequences. can bring illness, diseases, confusion, and even premature death. And we saw how we can deal with fear as children of God. As children of God, we looked at some help hints that might help us to confront fear. And we said, number one, we need to be sure of our salvation that we are genuinely born again. We need to stand firm in our faith. We need to put our trust in the Lord. And we should rely on the leading of the Holy Spirit always. And we said we are not to run away from fears. When they come, we should confront them. Why we refuse to be intimidated? And we said we should apply the word of God. And we should strive to resist fear. Today we are looking at the other type of fear, which is the fear of the Lord. And the Bible passage is taken from Psalm 111, 4 to 10. Psalm 111, I read 4 to 10. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He has given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the hidden. The works of his hands are very seen and judgment, all his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever, and are done in truth and not brightness. He sends redemption unto his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. And the last verse, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all day that do his commandments, his praise endureth forever. And the memory verse is taken from Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Let's take it again. Proverbs 1, 7. Say, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord is a reverential trust of God, coupled with hatred of evil. It is humble reverence towards God. Without the fear of God, you cannot serve him in truth. The fear of God is to respect him, obey him, submit to his discipline, and worship him in all. We have two lesson outlines for today's lesson. The first outline says, why is it necessary to fear God? And the second one says, what are the benefits of having the fear of God? Is it really necessary to fear God? That's a lesson outline one. We are commanded to fear God first. We see that in Psalm 33 verse 8, Psalm 33 verse 8. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand 
in awe of him. We are being commanded to fear the Lord. Why? Number one, because of God's holiness. Revelation 15 verse 4, Revelation chapter 15 verse 4 says, Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. So we're commanded to fear God, number one, because of God's holiness. Secondly, we're commanded to fear God because of his greatness, God's greatness. You can see that in 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 36. 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 36. But the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt with great power and a stretched out arm, him shall you fear and him shall you worship and to him shall you do sacrifice. We also commanded so fear God because of God's goodness. We can say that in 1 Samuel chapter 12 verse 24. 1 Samuel 12 24. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things he hath done for you. And lastly, we are commanded to fear God. Why? Because of God's forgiveness. Without which we would all have ended up in hell. Psalm 130 verse 4, Psalm 130 verse 4 says, But there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. We need to fear God because, number one, we are commanded to fear him. And why are we commanded to fear him? We say because of his holiness, because of his greatness, because of his goodness, and particularly because of his forgiveness. He's the only one that can forgive us. If he did not forgive us, we would all have ended up in hell. Secondly, the fear of the Lord is also necessary. Number one, in the place of worship, for worship, Psalm 5 verse 7. The fear of the Lord is also necessary in service. You want to serve God, you cannot serve him if you don't have his fear in you. It's also necessary to fear God so as to keep us from sin. Exodus chapter 20 verse 20, Exodus 20, 20. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you and that his fear may be before you, before your faces, that ye sin not. Moses was telling the children of Israel that why God brought them so far, number one, is to prove them and that so that his fear may be upon them so that they will not go into sin. Also, fear of God is necessary for administration of justice. We see this in 2 Chronicles chapter 19, verses 6 to 9. 2 Chronicles 19, 6 to 9. When Jehoshaphat made some reforms in the land of Judah, he appointed some judges over the land and he gave them the injunction. He charged them in their duties that they should fear God, they should not respect persons, and they should not take gifts or bribe. The fear of God is necessary for good governance. Second Samuel 23, verse 3. Second Samuel 23, verse 3. I read, The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me. That was David speaking there. He says, He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. So for good governance, the fear of God is very, very important. If the people who are ruling, who are governments, have the fear of God, we will have a better governance. Also, fear of God is necessary for the perfecting of holiness in our Christian lives. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. As Christians, as children of God, 
There's no way we can be perfect in our holiness if we do not carry with us the fear of God. And lastly, because of coming judgment, against which there is no appeal. There's no appeal when God judges on the final day. Revelation 14, verse 7. Revelation 14, verse 7. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And now what are the benefits of having the fear of God? Is there any benefit in having the fear of God? We have so many benefits. If you and I will live in the fear of God, like we said, the fear of God is beneficial. It's a good type of fear. The fear of God brings pleasure to the Lord, which in turn brings blessings to man. God loves it when his children live in fear of him. And not only that, it also brings blessings upon us. Psalm 147 verse 11 and also Psalm 112 verse 1. It gives deep knowledge and wisdom. That's another benefit when you live in the fear of God. You have deep knowledge of God and wisdom. It is also a unique weapon against sin. Very, very important to children of God. When you live in fear of the Lord, it's a mighty weapon against sin. We saw that in the case of Joseph. Joseph said, how can he do this evil and sin against God? He had the fear of God in him, and that kept him away from sin. So one of the benefits of having the fear of God is that it keeps us away from sin. It's a weapon against sin. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Proverbs 8.13 Pride and arrogance and the evil way and the forward mouth. I do. I hate. Also, one of the benefits of having the fear of God is that it brings protection for believers and their loved ones. Proverbs 14.26 Proverbs 14.26 in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. Also, if you fear the Lord, his pity will increase upon you. Psalm 103, verse 13. Psalm 103, verse 13. He also makes a man acceptable to God. Acts 10, verse 35. Acts 10, 35. He breaks down his mercy. Psalm 103, verse 17. Psalm 103, verse 17. He brings long life. He brings long life. Proverbs 14, 27. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to so depart from the snares of death. So, he brings long life when we live in the fear of the Lord. He brings answers to prayers. Psalm 145, verse 19. Psalm 145, verse 19. It brings separation from evil. Proverbs 16, verse 6. Proverbs 16, verse 6. It brings confidence. Proverbs 14, verse 26. Proverbs 14, 26. We have read that scripture earlier on. It brings confidence when you live in the fear of God. And lastly, it guarantees true riches, honor, and life. Proverbs 22, verse 4. Now, what do you think would happen to those who choose not to fear God? It means they will not receive all these benefits that you have mentioned that comes to those who fear the Lord. And they might be receiving the other side of it, which might be causes or negative things in their lives. In summary, we have seen that this second type of fear, that is the fear of the Lord, is beneficial. It brings blessings. It has various benefits for us to enjoy as believers. And so as believers, we are supposed to live in the fear of the Lord. We are commanded to fear God, as we have seen. And we are also, we saw that is, the fear of the Lord is necessary 
it's necessary for us to fear him if we must serve him, if we must worship him, if we must administer justice and govern correctly, we need to live in the fear of the Lord. And in conclusion, it says, fear the Lord God Almighty, because it will keep our feet from death, from the snares of death. We keep our feet away from the evil and from sin, and so we can inherit life. It will keep us away from the wrath and the judgment of God. God bless you. Shall we pray? Father, let your reverential fear reign in my heart. Father, please let your reverential fear let it reign in my heart. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Homer